What's up guys, Mason the Brock Henderson, and this is episode 11 of Jessica Jones, first season. A little bit less, um, I guess, it kind of takes away from the main story for a second. Uh, because now this one's mainly about Simpson, and what's going on with him. You know, the uh, last episode we saw him kill Clemens, and uh, kind of freak out on Trish for a second, and it's all based on this drug that he keeps, that he keeps taking. Um, in this episode, he returns. He's looking for Jessica because... <sighs> couldn't really tell. It seems like he's doing it because he thinks she won't kill him. Or if he does think that she'll kill him, he wants to be the one to kill him. I don't know. This, this drug is really messing with his mind, and you can see that in the final fight that... Uh, he has with Jessica and ultimately Trish. Um, so it just, uh, you're not really sure what is, if he really has motivations to do this or if this is just the pill is screwing with him. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a very interesting episode. Like I said, mainly because it's not what you'd expect. Uh, after the last episode with what happened with Hope and the, uh, the four people nearly committing suicide and all of that stuff. You expect it to be, we gotta find Kilgrave now. But majority of this episode for Jessica is spent looking for his dad. Um, because she knows that likely Kilgrave's dad will not last long. And yet he's not showing up um, in any morgues or you know, any hospitals anywhere. Whew, wow, that's the first time I've ever yawned <laughs> in a review. Check. First time yawning. I late late night last night watching Netflix. It, it happens. Anyway, so she's searching for Kilgrave's father, not finding him. Finding several John Doe's that are older. Then she finally happens upon Clemens' body. Um, it, it, you know, charred because of the CDC, but I think she notices a few things about him. You know it. It kind of just seemed like she was piecing it all together. Very interesting that the uh, the inner monologue has gone away completely now. It hasn't featured in the past few episodes. Um, so I'm wondering if they're going to bring that back at the end. You know, it's like a way to close out the season, her monologuing. Or if it's just... she's uh, I don't know. It's, it's just weird that they started off doing that and then they stopped. Um, which, you know... It was doing okay. It's done better than most inner monologues, because most of the time with inner monologues, it's <laughs> they do it all the time, and then it just why are we still talk? Why are you talking to yourself? You know, it just it gets weird and it doesn't work well. It worked okay for when they were doing it, um, but then they just they sort of stopped somewhere, and uh, I wonder if that was a like a specific choice they meant to do that, or if maybe they just got tired of. <laughs> They, they couldn't find places to put an inner monologue in. Um, but anyway, continue on with this episode. Find Clemens, find out it's him, tells Trish about it. Um, Trish is on her way to go meet her to help search for Kilgrave's father. Um, because obviously they assume that Kilgrave is the one that killed Clemens. And so she's about to go search for him with Jessica. But then, standing outside of her apartment door, is Simpson. And you can tell that based on what happened with in, in the hotel room with him trying to attack Kilgrave's father, you can tell she doesn't trust him, she doesn't know what's going on. And then two guys that are part of, apparently a part of this uh, whatever drug that he's taking show up and he straight up kills both of them. Um, and then locks Trish inside of her apartment and calls Jessica, finds out where she is, and goes to find her. Whew, we all did it again. Hmm. What, what makes this interesting, though, is how it ends. Um, because I wasn't really sure, you know, Jessica is kind of injured because in searching for Kilgrave, she thinks she spots him, tries to cross the street, gets hit by a truck. Um, and so she's kind of, she has a few broken ribs, so she's not herself. 
So Simpson comes to take care of her. She still is a good detective, so she figures out all the clues, finds out that a cop, you know, the bullet in Clemens' head was came from a cop's pistol or something like that. And so he's like, so you think it's me? <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know, like, what, what happens next is just this fight between Simpson and Jessica to which he's about to take her out because, like I said, broken ribs, she's not able to fight as well. But then Trish comes out of nowhere, hits him with a fire extinguisher, and then they both kind of escape into the bathroom, and he starts to break down the door. Trish pulls out the pills that she stole from him, which I totally forgot. I remembered her having the pills, but it totally slipped my mind until that moment. I'm like, oh yeah, she has the pills. Um, and then she takes one, to it's supposed to like increase your adrenaline and uh, help you fight better and she takes one and he's like you're gonna die without the blue pill to calm down your heart and uh, she uses the adrenaline from it to stick a knife in his shoulder and uh, fights him for a little bit you can tell he's not fighting though um, because <laughs> he's just like standing there oh, oh getting hit and she just keeps swinging and you know, using some of her Krav Maga techniques to, to hit him. Like, I'm not trying to hurt you. And then throws her onto a table. Then Jessica, using the, uh, the distraction, comes out of the bathroom, takes him down. Um, you know, just like slams him up against the refrigerator a couple times and then like pulls the refrigerator off the wall and kind of like, you know, it was weird. Like, I thought she was going to like use it to throw it against him. But she just kind of pulled it off the wall and pushed it down on top of him and then he was out. I'm not sure if he's dead or unconscious. The the old guy that gave him the pills comes by later. Dr. Kozlov, I think his name is. Um, but he comes by later to pick him up and you can't really tell if he's dead or not. He checks. <sighs> Dang it. Uh, he, he does check, but he doesn't say. He just, take him. So, I don't know what's going on there. Um, but Trish, you know, for a few seconds she's like, oh, I feel great. I feel pumped. Is this how you feel all the time? And, and then all of a sudden she starts to, and she can't breathe. Jessica calls an ambulance. The guy in the ambulance is like, what is she taking? She took some sort of stimulant. He, I'm guessing he gave her like a depression medicine. And that, you know, it, he does save her life. And then it finally ends with Jessica gets a text from an unknown number. So you've been looking for me. Um, it says, you know, I met your boyfriend. If you want to see him one more time, now's your last chance. Obviously talking about Luke. So she goes to the bar, and he's in there. And the one thing I didn't like about this is that the way the camera work was set up, it was... I knew that the bar was about to explode. Um, and I don't... There's just this camera angle that they tend to take whenever something like that is about to explode uh, some the background looks a little bit CGI and uh, th they're always like looking at it at a certain angle right before the whole thing just explodes and they, they did that here and I'm like so the bar's about to explode I, like I wasn't sure exactly what they're about to do you know before this and then she gets there and then the camera angles the little CGI in the background that you can see and she's like okay bar's about to explode Sure enough, it does, but because it's Luke Cage, he stumbles out, <laughs> he's on fire, he's just like, what's going on? You know, he has that look on his face, like, I don't know what's going on. Um, and Jessica puts him out, and that's how this episode ends. There's one other thing I do want to talk about, though, because I don't know why this character's still alive. Robin, Ruben's uh, sister, um, why? Why is she still alive? They start off this episode... And she's like freaking out because of what Kilgrave did to her, made her try to commit suicide, all this stuff. And Jessica's like trying to get them to, you know, she's like, okay, here's the lie. We're all just here to, we're all just here to meet and drink together. And then the girl went crazy and stabbed herself in the throat. Um, and of course Robin's like, no, I will not lie, blah, 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 I'm not a liar like you. And just stupid. And they go out to the cops are taking their statements everybody is willingly agreeing because 
Jessica explains, the cops will be taking control by Kilgrave if they go after him. So that's why they're lying about this. So Jessica can go after him. Um, and she starts off like, I saw everything. I remember every little detail. Every detail of what just happened is in my mind. And then she kind of looks over at Jessica, and Jessica's like giving her a look. She's like, well, things are crazy. I mean, a girl just stabbed herself in the throat. and It, it was like they're making it look like she's about to she's about to spill the guts. She's about to reveal Kilgrave, and then ultimately decide not to. But then there's this, there's this moment later on in the episode where Malcolm's like trying to get the people together um, to meet. And Robin shows up and she's like, look, you need to stop trying to get people to meet. You need to stop group texting a bunch of random strangers your address so they can come talk to you. And then he just, he has this moment like, I have to believe that people are going to help each other. Because she's like talking down, helping other people. She's like, at worst, people are assholes. At, or at best, people are assholes. At worst, they're mind-controlled zombies. And he just... You can see that he doesn't want to believe that. Um, I remember the the picture that was there with his mom, and when Jessica went into his apartment um, after you know finding out about him taking the pictures, and you can he's talking about you. Know, I have to believe that whenever my mom you know, did all this work for the community, I have to believe that whenever my dad prayed for you know all the people to help other people, I have to believe that helping people is right and Robin's just like well it's not he's like well if, if I can't if I can't believe that if I can't believe that all of this is right I'll just kill myself and she's just well there's a new somewhere of Dunster and nobody's gonna stop you this time and then just runs away I'm just like she's gotta die like <laughs> why is she still alive this girl is so crazy and evil and just uh, you know, I, I, there are just the, there are certain characters in shows like this that are just plain outright evil characters. You know, they just they see the worst in humanity. They refuse to help anybody else. Somebody is in danger. They won't do anything about it because it's all about them. It's about nobody else. It's all about them. They're gonna stay in their little bubble, and that's it. And that's exactly who she is. And on top of that, she has developed, like, hate for people that have not even wronged her. You know, she did something stupid, and then Jessica, like, called her out on it, and now Jessica is just evil. And nobody should trust her, because she she has men under her pinky, and she controls that I can't believe you're doing stuff for her, and blah, blah, blah. I just don't understand why this character even exists. If the whole point is just to have a character in there to... What the, there's not even really a point for her to be in here. There really is not. Besides the fact that if it weren't for her, things with Jessica would have gone okay, and then she screwed it all up and gave Kilgrave a way out. Like, that's the only reason that she's even in here, is just to unwittingly help Kilgrave, because she's an idiot. Um, but anyway, her character just frustrates me, and her telling Malcolm to go kill himself, and nobody's going to stop you this time, I seriously wanted him to just punch her in the face and say, look, shut up. You are crazy and you're stupid. Just go up to your room, weep over your little brother because you like to do incestual things to him, and leave everybody else alone because you're crazy and you're stupid. <sighs> I finally got to vent about it. Uh, but other, other than her character, the rest of this episode was really good. It was interesting, like I said, to take us take a step away from Kilgrave to focus on Simpson, who has now become kind of a villain uh, in and of himself, and just you know once again morality of the show is killing right or wrong, and Jessica's kind of at this moment now she's like, well I gotta kill him, I have to kill him for hope's sake. So I'm interested to see where this goes. Obviously Luke Luke is back in the show now and. Uh, because of what Kilgrave did to him, likely you know, he'll try to reconcile with Jessica. I hope it's not just as easy as, okay, I forgive you because you tried to kill me. I hope they actually do talk about it. She has to apologize, admit she was wrong, 
and then maybe they can reconcile. Um, but I hope it doesn't just happen right away, like, you just okay with it, because that would be dumb. Uh, but other than that, I, I still, you know, once again, two episodes left. I'm, I have a feeling the next one's going to set up for the ultimate showdown. Uh, and I don't, I don't know where they're going with this, but man, it's got me excited, so. That's it for this review. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you at the next one. Peace out.